I was going to have a comment there. I'm not. The show began with Eo Shirai, Eo Sky arriving, and Michael Cole misidentifying her as Jay Uso. Then also shown arriving were Lyra Gunther, and then yes, Jay Uso showed up as well too. Uh, this led into the first segment, which was Sami Zayn coming down to the ring to talk about his Intercontinental Title match coming up in Saudi Arabia against Bronson Reed and Chad Gable. He talked about his issues with Gable being personal. While the issue with Reed is just business. Before long, Cable, Gable came out flanked by Otis, Tozawa, and Maxine. He started by burying his own crew. Maxine lost in the Queen of the Ring. Tozawa got in no offense against Bronson Reed last week, and Otis is just a big disappointing load. Uh, Sammy then asked the Academy when they were going to be done taking crap from Gable. Gable then jumped back in to say he's not only taking Sammy's title in Saudi Arabia, but also taking his soul. At that point, Gable went down to the ring, and we had a one-on-one -on -one match. It was a hell of a way to get to it, but it led into an actual one-on-one -on -one match between Gable and Zayn. No surprise, it was good. Match went about 16 and a half minutes. Gable slapped Otis at one point outside. He, he had tossed Maxine and Tozawa for not interfering for him. Uh, Gable slapped Otis after Otis refused to attack Sammy outside the ring. After Gable threw Sammy back in, he grabbed the title belt. He went back into the ring, went to hit Sammy with it, but then got suplexed into the corner. Sammy went into the other corner to deliver the Huluva kick while the referee checked on Chad. Otis then jumped up on the ring apron and clotheslined Sammy. That allowed Gable to hit the Chaos Theory and get the pin. So that's uh, Otis. Against his will, broke down and, and cheated. There's going to be more to that story coming up later on. And then we got a, a pretty cool EO Sky hype video uh, for tonight's match against Lyra. Uh, after the break, Jackie Redmond was set to interview Alpha Academy when we heard a bunch of pipes being clanged about and moaning. And Zelina Vega ran in to the shot to call for Rey Mysterio, Dragon Lee, and Joaquin Wilde, who were in the background. Jackie, the cameraman, and the LWO ran back to see what was going on, and it was Cruz del Toro laid out and holding his wrist, which was injured when somebody attacked him backstage weeks ago on SmackDown. They just did the whole thing again. There was no follow-up to this later, so, you know, Carlito was talked about as the one doing it. Um, this is possibly because a lot of what's been taking place with, with the Cruz and Joaquin has been on NXT and with there being no NXT live this week he may have gotten some news about his wrist which is going to put him on the shelf for even longer so they went ahead and shot the angle uh, last night that may be what it is we'll have to find out more about it as the days go on then it was time for Braun Breaker who's just awesome He's got an awesome tan. He came to the ring to face Kill Dixon, who apparently wrestles on NXT Level Up. The bell rang. Breaker turned around to the corner and said, what are we doing here? And he cut a little promo, still really pissed off about the fact that he was not put into the King of the Ring tournament by Adam Pearce. And he turned around and he took off and he absolutely killed this dude with a spear got the pin braun then threw dixon out of the ring took off running around the ring speared dixon again at i don't know 12 miles an hour it wasn't his full sprint or anything like that but he hit him hard he threatened to kill him with the ring steps but the officials ran down he threw the steps down and you know, with the WWE ring steps, they kind of go to a V, so they fit right up against the ring post. Well, amazingly enough, that guy was splattered out there. His head was laying right in the V, and Braun went and picked up a chair, and he took it, and he slammed it over the guy's head. If you watch this on WWE.com, they do the stop action right before he hits him. It looks really good. Even in real time, last night on the show, it looked awesome. You know, the guy probably didn't have an issue. Again, if there is, we'll find out about it. But it was as completely safe, I guess, as you can get. But it looked fantastic. Brom Breaker looks like a killer. Fantastic job. They loaded Dixon into the ambulance. 
after a break, Pierce went to go confront Braun, and Braun told him, look, I can't be controlled. You should have put me in the King of the Ring tournament, but since you didn't, everything that happens around this place, Adam Pierce, it is on you. So that was that. Becky Lynch then hiked up Lyra before she went out for her match with EO Sky, which was up next. The first semifinal of the Queen of the Ring tournament. The match went through two commercial breaks and about 20 minutes in total. Probably went a little bit too long, but just because there wasn't a mountain of heat for it. But as it went on, the fans, you know, cared about it a little bit more and a little bit more. And then after the second commercial break, business actually picked up in the match, and so did the crowd for it. It was just it was just a really good pro wrestling match. With Asuka out, Io Shirai is, to me, by default, the best women's wrestler on the roster. She's not the biggest star. She's not the biggest thing right now or anything right like that but with consistency with the experience level uh, with all that you add into it eo really is the the most important glue on that roster for as big of a star as Rhea or Liv or Bianca or anybody else is eo's probably the best one on there now that Oscar's hurt and I thought this was a great example of that in trying to help get Lyra over Damn straight it was. Here we go. Hey. Look at this. Look at this. Look I made up. it. Hey. Hello, everybody. Oh, look at that. What a smile you got. Where what what are we you? talking about? The King of the Ring? Yeah, we're talking Man, about Man, I'm so excited to talk about that, that uh, tournament. Yeah, well, you know what? I just got through uh, talking about the, uh, the, the Queen of the Ring semifinals match. That's where I'm at right now in this world-famous Raw review. Well, you know, yesterday I can't help but notice that you did say... You did say that it was possible that Lyra was going to go to the finals. Yeah. And uh, looking at this tournament here, I mean, I don't want to say what I was going to say, but I'll just say I'm quite intrigued really? by the King and Queen of the Ring tournament. Well, if you look at, like, when the thing first started and we looked down at all of these different names right here, and everybody started predicting, okay, well, who's going to do what? And then, you know, okay, well, I think that, uh, you know, Tama Tonga... Actually, I think I, I predicted Jey Uso or L.A. Knight at the beginning. Those were my two predictions for the men. And then for the women, I picked Jade Cargill. And I think I only picked Jade Cargill. I thought she was going to win the entire thing. And so, like, each week, they do all of these matches. And the one thing that you cannot say about this tournament is it is predictable. Because True. I'm watching this tournament and... What? This person won? What? This person won? So now we've come down to EO Sky versus Lyra, which Lyra wins. And then we've got Nia Jax and Bianca Belair, who I guess Nia's probably going to win. I wasn't expecting Nia to go to the finals. I was not expecting. If you looked at this whole women's bracket, who was expecting Nia versus Lyra in the finals? Anybody? Those who love rhyme. And hey, you know what's uh, interesting about that as well is uh, the winner gets a shot at their brand's title, correct? Yes. I think that's what happens. I think so. Well, I mean, Lyra and Nia is not a foregone conclusion because no. Dave goes, well, you know, Nia is probably going to win and face Bailey, which could happen. But I mean, we also have Lyra and Becky. They had that match in NXT. Or Lyra and Liv. Uh, could be if Liv wins, yeah. yeah you could do that as well. Because they're building up Liv in, in a, a whole lot is, you know, Lyra being Becky's second there, and Liv is taking it out on Lyra. So if Liv wins that belt, not only do you have a rematch with Becky, you got a feud built in with Lyra. And then for the men, you know, Jey Uso lost. Clean. Yeah, he did. He was choked unconscious by Gunther. No interference, nothing. They just beat him. So Gunther is in the finals against either Randy Orton or Tama Tonga. And it's the same thing. Tama Tonga versus Gunther is a bizarre match. I don't expect to see it. But there's been a lot on this tournament I didn't expect to see. And if Tama Tonga wins the tournament, Tom and Cody, yeah, Cody against the bloodline again. Or you've got Gunther and Randy Orton, which I would prefer, which would be a great match. And if that happens, you know, Randy Orton versus Cody, Gunther versus Cody, this tournament's been awesome. You know why it could be Gunther? Is because you 
can put that briefcase in his hand or in the hands of Ludwig Kaiser to carry it around for him. Well, they don't get a and, briefcase. Well, look, this will the give win. you the whatever, the crown, whatever. This will give you time to do to me what you need to do. And I talked about before the break, which is turn Damian Priest babyface because if Jay Ru- Uso is the top heel or the top babyface on that roster that is all heels, you're going to have to do something there. And Drew McIntyre coming in and Drew and him going at it. And then you have CM Punk kind of there on the shadows when it comes to Drew. To me, it can keep Gunther a little bit out of things with the fact that in his pocket when he's ready he can have a world title match i got a question for everybody almost everybody a couple people i don't want to answer but uh is this the best king of the ring and queen of the ring tournaments of all time i mean have there been better ones i'm sure there probably has but it's maybe bar i mean we've had like and the thing with this tournament, I mean, a lot of those old tournaments they used to run on pay per view. It was just like nothing happening. Well, you know, I mean, like opening matches of of uh, the roadie against. Yeah, I mean, know. Gunther and Sheamus, twenty one minutes. You know, Kofi and Ray as house show, so we don't know. But the Kofi Gunther match, fourteen minutes. Ely and Jay, fourteen. Like all these matches were good without Bart Gunn. And for the women, I mean, everything has been good, and there have been surprises and. They push Lyra all the way to the finals. You know, she just came up and goes, Oh, they call him up from NXT and don't do anything with him. Lyra's here in the finals. She's run through EO Sky, Shayna, and uh, Natty. Three people to get to the finals. So, you know, I've, I've been uh, really into this tournament. I think it's been a quite great tournament. And I really, honestly, was not expecting it to be anything. But here we are. So, yeah, that was that. What else was on Raw? Did you do the Raw report? Probably not. I'm I'm right. I wasn't kidding you. That's the point where I got to in the Raw report. I see. Then Jackie interviewed Lyra in the ring afterwards. Well, that was you silly. You didn't like that very much, right? Nah, it was wacky. Well, it was. Look, they didn't need it. Look, they got Lyra over as far as being in the ring. That was enough there. She, to me, and this is not an insult because somebody's got to fulfill this role. She's going to be like Brutus Beefcake or like Jewel Strongbow or Jay Strongbow where they're going to beat her and get sympathy on her before they get to the big baby face who's the champion. It's probably going to be her uh, lot in life. I'll tell you after the break what I didn't like about it, and it was not her delivery. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Very quickly, the one thing I didn't like about the Lyra promo has nothing to do with her. Her delivery could have been anybody. But Lyra is in the semifinals. And she beats EO Sky. And she gets the pin, and the first thing she does is she looks stunned. She absolutely cannot believe that she won. She can't believe it. Shocked. And it's always like, I hate that. Bro, Lyra, you made it to the semifinals of the tournament. You're a former NXT champion. You beat Natty. You beat Shayna Baszler. Another former NXT champion, former multi-time tag team champion. And you got in there with Io Sky, you made it all the way to the semifinals, and, and you beat her and you can't believe it? Like, you're shocked? Well, Why would anyone be in this business if they didn't think they could win any match at any time? Even in real sports, okay? And I don't watch a lot of them, okay? But you ever seen somebody in, like, a NFC final or whatever? I don't want to say the Super Bowl because it's the very end, but, like, right before that? Okay, who would it be? Yes. What, what's right before the Super Bowl? The AFC and NFC cha- Conference Championship. Okay, the yes. NFC Conference Championship. You ever seen the team that won the NFC Conference Championship? Like when they win, they all just go, oh my God, I, I can't believe we won. Oh my God. And then they interview him. They're like, I can't believe it. I can't believe that we won this match. It would never happen. Even big upsets in UFC when someone's like, you know, uh, minus or plus 500 underdog or whatever. They win, and they're still like, nobody thought I could do it, but I knew I could, and I proved everybody wrong. Here, Lyra's like, baffled. I can't believe I won a match. I'm shocked. And then she gets interviewed by Jackie, and she's, Jackie's like, it's impossible to believe, isn't it? Can you even believe this? And then Lyra first goes, I can't believe it. I can't believe it happened. But then she goes, but you know what? It doesn't matter if you get where you get as long as you believe. I was like, so do you believe or you not believe? Damn it! Just get the victory and go on to the finals! At least she didn't cry. That's true, she didn't cry. 
Or speak Gaelic. We still don't know what she was talking about last week, and she promised be, to tell us. That'd be kind of cool. I like that. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.